Hey there everybody, welcome back. This is actually a reshot video because something massive dropped on my lap just as I was finishing the last one, so I don't feel like talking about it anymore. Let's just get into it. So yes, welcome back to this, the second edition of the sort of entertainment Hollywood film-oriented fit-to-spin news recap show. I'll come up with a better name, I promise. It's, it's a work in progress. Now, as I said at the top, this is a reshoot. This is a sort of updated version of the original video, which I was this close to finishing before an, a wellspring of, of outrage mongering and absolute horseshit decided to explode, obligating me to cover it in this one. So we're going to start out with the top story. You all know what I'm going to talk about. That's right. James Gunn, the now former director of Guardians of the Galaxy, has been fired by Disney following the uh, uncovering in a, in a very in-depth investigation by Mike Cernovich of uh, some really shitty jokes, some genuinely shitty, shitty pedo jokes made nearly a decade ago. Now, Gunn has since scrubbed the living hell out of his Twitter and what was an attempt to sort of probably salvage himself, but as we know, the internet never forgets, and thus, we find now that these shitty jokes have surfaced and they are, as Disney puts it simply, indefensible. That's right, uh, they are indefensible jokes, and therefore he must be removed from his position in office. Now, there are a lot of layers to this, and I'm not going to spend too, too much time on it, but there are a few things I'd really like to unpack. First off is the outright and open hypocrisy at play here. Now, when we consider where the sort of outrage over people getting fired over tweets or statements or political positions or the sort of sniping that the team sports mentality of the more simple-minded wannabe politicos out there seem to engage in, we typically get to look to the left. The incidents surrounding Rub and Tug and Scarlett Johansson's casting, and as well as uh, what I'm going to cover after that when we when we get through this segment. Um, we, typically, we can usually count on, on the insipid social justice progressive left to sort of stir up outrage, demanding people be fired for things that they say. Incidents such as Roseanne come to mind. However, when it comes to those who wish to criticize this behavior, these tactics, and call them underhanded, dirty, devious, and, and, and really unfit for a civil society where ideas are supposed to matter, it is rather stunning to see somebody who, for some bewildering fucking reason, has become a hero to the modern right, um, engaging gleefully and publicly in them, not only once but twice, also trying to go after comedian Michael Ian Black after he was done. Now, with this, the surfacing of these genuinely shitty pedo jokes from a long time ago came as a, something of a surprise to a lot of people, but those are people who probably haven't been paying attention to the overall progression of guns rather quick and unfortunately short rise to fame. Now, whereas one might think that Disney had just discovered these, now these are actually things that the company should have known about for a long time. Uh, in an interview once, uh, Gunn had even uh, described how going from a small indie trauma style filmmaker when he'd take to Twitter to be edgy and, uh, and, and fuck around with really off-color jokes, which once again, like they're, I think honestly the biggest crime to them is that they were fucking terrible jokes. But all the same, um, in a previous interview, he'd actually admitted to previously trying to be an edgy sort of guy on the internet, which, let's be honest, who hasn't at this point, and saying that he's since really grown as a person, sort of developed. Now, I'd say that if this was a, a less than genuine sort of move, this was more of a PR move on his point, saying that he's grown and matured and become, as he says, quote, more sensitive, well, he wouldn't have left those tweets up, would he? But instead, there they were, and there went juice, bro. Uh, let's uh, keep in mind, too. This is also the uh, author of Gorilla Mindset, so there we go. A great alpha male guru wannabe life coach guy. All the same, though, here we have Cernovich sort of gleefully trying to destroy the career of what was a very talented director, somebody whose work I greatly enjoyed despite the fact that I oftentimes disagreed with a number of his politics, engaging in the same sorts of shitty behavior that he and those who follow him have for many years now been decrying as unethical and, and, and altogether low and sullied to be engaging in. Now, an additional layer of hypocrisy comes by way of someone who I kind of consider a friend of mine sort of taking part in this, and this is, honestly, this is Ian Miles Chong. 
Now, when it comes to the question of Gunn and his old edgy tweets and his shitty jokes and and, and his, uh, his, his about face and his evolution as a person, which is something like, you know, we're either supposed to accept or deny. Well, we can't really get around that issue if we're going to be talking about someone in regards to Ian Miles Chung. Now, again, this is somebody with a history who at one point was actually something of a sort of strident, edgy boy uh, posting sort of neo-Nazi horseshit in certain forms before making an about face himself and becoming something of an anti-Gamergate social justice warrior for a while, right up until, for whatever reason, he decided to do an about face yet once again and become what is increasingly a rather conservative uh, journalist. Now, if we are to hold Gunn accountable for uh, his his statements, if we are to say that Disney was right in firing him because, oh, Roseanne got fired, well, if you were upset about Roseanne getting fired, then you have to be upset about Gunn getting fired because it's called a sort of ethical consistency. I know it's something that's lost on a lot of people, but given the fact that we are in an environment now where point scoring is so fucking important, that we cheer whenever our side gets a victory, no matter how it happens, and we boo when the other guys do, shaming them for shitty tactics. Well, it does seem in this sense that this story is a perfect example of how ethical consistency has largely just gone clean out the fucking window. Now, in respect to the tweets themselves, looking over them, they are pretty edgy boy jokes, and the worst part, again, is that they're not even really that funny. There's nothing clever to them. They're just sort of, uh, you could almost call it a sort of shock jock thing. But this does sort of bring up an interesting point that I actually recently got into a discussion with, of all people, uh, Mundane Matt about, and that being that it does sort of seem as though many on the right have gravitated towards the claims and accusations of pedophilia in the same way that the left have gravitated towards the term Nazi. In the same way that progressives will call anyone who disagrees with them a Nazi, it's increasingly seeming that, if not an outright accusation, at least the hints somehow of pedophilia seems to be sort of a go-to tactic for a lot of these people. Even within Cernovich's own attempts to go after Michael Ian Black, featuring all of these various tweets clearly sort of keyword searching in the hopes of finding some kind of dirt, like a tabloid fucking reporter might, uh, we can kind of see how it is that there's there's, 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 it's almost as though certain factions within the right are beginning to sort of mimic the factions they hate on the left by establishing their own new terminology and pushing forward with a witch hunt in that regard. Maybe this is because so many on the progressive left are dumb enough to actually think that communism is a good thing, that when they're called communists, they proudly proclaim that they are. But all the same, it is kind of saddening to see the side which for a while now has been trying to say things such as facts over feelings, guys, actually sinking to the level of the opposition that they have opposed for such a long time, trying to cite the notion that this is just the way things are, this is the way of the world now, to which I would say that if we are to accept shitty tactics and unethical behavior or just really just dirty, underhanded bullshit for pointless point scoring on one given side or the other, um, that without the standards to hold oneself or one's side above that, well, it really does sort of explain why the world is this way. And if this is the case, no one is allowed anymore really to complain about anything from neo-Nazi marches to uh, transgender children or the batshit crazy shit being taught in colleges right now because, hey guys, this is just the way it is now. All in all, though, I find this firing of James Gunn to be an abysmal pile of horse shit. He was a talented director who had actually already tried to make sort of a Ends, or at least explain his behavior previously. And in this, with the with the sort of ensuing attempt at a witch hunt that we saw sort of start to unfold a little bit afterwards, we are starting to see that just as I kind of said in a previous video, the culture war ruins fucking everything. And the culture warriors who are more than happy on either side to stoke as much outrage as they can to get those sweet, sweet clicks and views, well, they're going to perpetuate this shit so long as we think that there are actual good guys left in this fight. It's a bunch of horse shit, and it's time we move on. And so, on that note, moving on as we are, we're now actually going to move on to kind of refocus, revisit a story from last week, this of course being about Scarlett Johansson. Now, last week, Johansson came under some serious fire for accepting the lead role in a film called Rub and Tug, where she would have been portraying a trans man, Dante Tex Gill, who was a notorious hustler and gangster figure from the 1970s, fending off the mob and establishing sort of a criminal empire of massage parlors, wink, wink. 
Now, uh, initially, uh, Johansson's team kind of pushed back against this, saying that if you have any issues with this casting, please talk to Jeffrey Tambor, Jared Leto, or Felicity Huffman. And with this meeting with even more of a firestorm, eventually by the end of the week, Johansson dropped out of the role entirely, leaving a lot of people wondering what's going to happen to the film. Now, my initial hopes, as expressed in last week's video, were that uh, somebody such as uh, oh, Leah here might actually get the role of being that they look right on point and that they are she's demonstrated she's a fucking banging banging ass actor i mean wonderful just skills like skill the kind of skills and kind of presentation you would want for this character but it's been announced this week apparently that the entire future of the project itself is in jeopardy now that johansson has backed off with it being actually relayed to us that johansson's own production company was heavily involved as well as the production company working with her former director from ghost in the shell now, with Johansson's exit and the future of the project being in peril, I'm once again sort of forced to look to the outrage culture and the cultural wars that are going on right now and the demands for representation in media to ask ourselves whether or not um, this was worth it. Is this a victory, as some progressives on Twitter like to be claiming, that they basically bullied Johansson out of a role which would have really humanized and brought a transgender person's story to the broad audiences of the public, um, that, that her, their bullying her out of the role was somehow a victory for equality and trans rights, only to find out now that the film about the transgender character, which would have put seats, asses in seats and eyeballs on screens, now might not even be made at all. In this, it is sort of a story of hubris, uh, one of those cases of be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. But within this, I do have to sort of pat myself on the back for something of a called it moment, and um, at the same time hang my head. This was a film and a story I was actually genuinely looking forward to seeing told. I was first made aware of it via the controversy itself, but upon looking deeper into it and looking into who this character was, I, I was really genuinely looking forward to seeing this sort of story being told. It's it's, it's, it's fascinating, and I encourage you to go and do the research. Dante Tech Skill, fascinating character. But here we are with yet another piece of what could have been entertaining art, something which could have been good, something which could have given you reason to pause and think about things a little bit, or at least maybe even consider how wild times might have been at one time. Um, not going to be made. It's not going to be made, no, because the, uh, the left and the right simply can't stop fighting. The left can't stop fighting to make mountains out of molehills everywhere they can, and the right, apparently, well, they don't know when to, uh, when to really step forward in the right way in this. Now, I guess it really can't be said that they need to go and defend Jo Hansen when she's under attack. Yet all the same, once again, we have yet another instance in which these sort of outrage mongers and the culture warriors out there seem really dead set on ruining everything that you might have an opportunity to enjoy. So there it is. I gotta once again gotta sort of it's it's a it's a it's a solemn a solemn sullen sort of pat myself on the back called it moment yet all the same um hopefully they'll be able to salvage the project hopefully they'll be able to maybe push through again if it does get produced at this point which I'm decreasingly seeing happening. It could very well end up just being an art house flop, or alternately, if they're able to get an A-list or somehow, if they're able to revive the project. At this point, it would be really difficult for the project to go forward and be released without the controversy surrounding the casting being made the sort of central issue under discussion. But we've got something else to talk about, too. So this next piece that we've got is, again, a follow-up to last week's story, this one involving Dwayne The Rock Johnson and his new movie Skyscraper. Now, in the film, uh, the, the Rock portrays a security expert who's actually an amputee missing his left leg. Um, shortly after uh, the film began to screen and while he was on sort of his publicity tour, curiously as well, around the same time that Scarlett Johansson began sort of falling into the outrage trap of the, the trans activists out there who insist she shouldn't have been cast and that they should have found a trans actor. Well, The Rock decided to pick up the mantle of disabilities advocate, calling on Hollywood and society in general to open up more opportunities to the disabled. Now, this being itself a relatively harmless sort of message, and one which to a certain extent you can, you can kind of understand, well, no good deed goes unpunished in the public eye, as Katie Sullivan, a Paralympian, sort of made her own sort of headlines, already coming out and bashing him for even 
accepting the role in the first place. Now, I don't know if maybe she thinks she's sort of a, a fit for that role herself. Maybe we could have had that sort of catwalk running and leaping through over to the building scene done with the sort of spring legs that she uses in her competitions. But all the same, here we have somebody who's really taken it upon themselves to get outraged on behalf of a group of people who largely probably would rather just, if they went to see it, enjoy a mindless schlocky rock movie, a uh, summer blockbuster as it was. But no, here we have uh, here we have Katie Sullivan saying that uh, he should just he should he should not say yes to accepting any disabled roles, and they should go to disabled people. Once again, proving that when you have a culture which allows entire populations to identify as the most simplistic, singular aspects of their perhaps physical appearance. When identity becomes more important than literally anything else, there is no such thing as a good deed. No good deed shall go unpunished. Fuck you, The Rock, you want to speak for the disabled? That's not your place, the disabled will do that. Okay, well then forget about profile, forget about actually having a champion that draws almost every eye in the room to them when they stand up and begin to speak. It's better that people feel included than that movies get produced or that causes be advanced. So on this, I want to just I want to give a one handed clap to uh, Katie Sullivan for uh, finding a way to make lemonade when there were no lemons to begin with. And now moving on to the last and sort of least relevant sort of story, but it's all the same. This before the explosion of the James Gunn story, I had really kind of thought this might be the next real big outrage explosion. And this comes by way of an interview Jamie Foxx recently gave in which he defended Quentin Tarantino's use of the N-word uh, throughout uh, Django Unchained. Now, in Django Unchained, I believe it was 111 times the word was used. That's, that's something to give Papa John's a run for his money. But all the same, uh, within the 111 times that it's said in the movie, there was a lot of outrage when the movie initially came out, with some people even saying that it's a sort of white supremacist dog whistle, this and that, even though it's the story of a badass former slave who murders the living hell out of slave traders and plantation owners and overseers and anybody who gets in his way. Um, all the same, uh, it, in his sort of reflection now, six years after the release of Django Unchained, Fox actually came out and said that, uh, that within the text, within the context, of the story within the context of working on a Tarantino film that it, that it made perfect sense and that he really didn't have any issue with it. Now, my initial thinking on reporting this was that if this actually picked up within certain sort of left-wing outrage spirals, I had to wonder how long it would be before perhaps Salon or HuffPo or The Guardian decided to publish an op-ed declaring that uh, Jamie Foxx is now a part of the alt-right. However, all the same, it does seem with the uh, sort of identity focuses that so many people are continuously pouring onto anything that happens to, ident like to exist within the public frame of reference, that we are increasingly given lessons time and time again about how it is that the culture war ruins literally fucking everything. Now, I suppose even if there was the primer for an outrage explosion to happen uh, over these statements made by Fox, these defenses of the use of the N-word in a film directed by a white man, well, I guess in a sense, if there was that potentially sort of lucked out, given the fact that uh, well, that Juice Bro decided to go after uh, James Gunn the way he did, as now the sort of the culture warriors, they're, all of their attention is going to be directed in that uh, in that all or all direction. So I'm going to wrap this up and say, truth be told. I am getting sick and tired of this shit to a point where I would actually really like to host this little, you know, these installment episodes talking about films in development, talking sort of maybe reviewing films, that sort of thing. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cinephile. I mean, I'm an actor. But all the same, it seems rather impossible to look at entertainment news or even film production at this point without finding yourself getting mired in the sort of outrage monger scenes, these culture warriors, so many of whom seem to exist to drum up outrage, be it left or right, um, for the purposes of really not only scoring points for their team, but also advancing their own careers in the public spotlight, absent any other actual talent than bitching. Within this, we can find this sort of constant repetition, a sort of thing which even goes back to Gamergate, when we can look and see the attempts on the parts of feminists and social justice warriors to effectively ruin the video games industry by forcing their political narratives into it. Now, because it's become such a fight and the ethical standards have been, you know, decreasing every day, sort of crumbling uh, like an old sandcastle, 
um, that I have to wonder if if we're going to reach a sort of a critical mass, a point, a, a breaking point in this sense, in which entertainment is once allowed to be entertainment, that it's allowed to be a story, it's allowed to be edgy, it's allowed to be non-inclusive or inclusive as the story requires, uh, because people will just get genuinely sick of seeing this shit, or is this actually going to be the new norm? Are simpering morons from left and right going to use every opportunity to attack anyone with any profile using his social media histories or, 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 or statements made in public so as to destroy their work, to get them fired, to end careers on the grounds of defending an ideology? Is politics genuinely going to continue infecting and ruining everything that we love and enjoy? Or are we at some point going to sort of adopt the new zeitgeist that maybe being constantly offended, maybe constantly sniping and attacking people uh, based on their ideologies, maybe isn't the best way to do things. And maybe that those who do that on a constant basis, those who make careers doing that, are in fact scumbags. I don't know. I leave this to you. Are we doomed in terms of entertainment? Is everything we love and enjoy going to be either ruined or sort of segregated into different camps set really only to affirm ideas people already have? Or do you think people will grow out of it? Do you think we'll find ourselves sort of having a bit of a renaissance where we remember that we don't need to be offended in one way or the other at every given thing and that, um, and that it's largely hypocritical? to adopt the sort of tactics and techniques that you spend a good amount of time lambasting others for while simply trying to justify, like a five-year-old, saying, well, they started it. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on sort of where, where you think this is all going to go, what you think the state of play regarding things is. I mean, with the James Gunn story, are you happy that he was fired over this? Do you think that it's justice or retribution because Roseanne got the bag? Were you the kind of person who defended Roseanne when she was under fire and now find yourself opposing or supporting James Gunn based on some sort of ethical uh, tie-ins that you, parallels that you find between the two? I'm curious to hear because despite the fact that these are cringy, mind-numbing, revolting stories on on their own in general, they do paint a rather interesting picture about what the overall public zeitgeist is regarding public life, entertainment, and politics in general. So leave your comments down below. You give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Give it a dislike. If not, either way, express why you did that down below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and Try to make sure the bell is set because apparently I don't think notifications are even going out. I appreciate you coming back around though. A big thank you to all my sustaining subscribers, all the new ones. Welcome and especially a big thank you to all the patrons who make this channel possible. If you are so interested in supporting the work that I do here, feel free to visit the links down below. Become a patron for as much as like a buck, five bucks. But all the same, helps keep the lights on, helps keep the production going, helps keep the internet alive so I can upload these videos when I get them done. But short of that, the other links down below that you can check out. You can find me always as you, uh, at YouTube Saints every Sunday night, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific here on YouTube. And then on Thursdays at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on that other streaming site we're not allowed to promote on YouTube anymore. Rhymes with um, Switch. Yeah? Yeah? But as always, you can catch me over there at the YouTube Saints. And of course, stay tuned for more videos to come. We've got a Fit to Spin news roundup coming every Friday. And from now on, I'm going to do these entertainment news things. Once I figure out a name, I'll figure out a name. You can help if you want every Saturday, as best as I can. Um, short of that, though, thank you all for stopping by. This has been your Hollywood sit and spin. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to think about this. Get the fuck out of here. I'll see you next time.